This year, it's all about the new. New decade, new faces, new expectations. And as the Cowboys are on their quest for six, they got the same dream. Where would this team go? There's no limits to what they can accomplish. So with a fresh perspective and a new direction, the 2020 Dallas Cowboys are determined to find greatness. And it all starts this offseason, right here on The Blitz. It's time for another edition of The Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans, and we certainly hope your Memorial Day weekend is going great. We've got plenty to talk about as the virtual offseason continues for the Dallas Cowboys. Kyle, the Cowboys are always busy. There's always something going on with this team as recently as Friday. Talk about Jamal Adams to the Cowboys. We won't get into any of that stuff right now <laughs> because it's just speculation. But the Cowboys making news earlier in the week with Alden Smith. And he met with the commissioner's office. And Alden Smith is now officially a Dallas Cowboy. Yeah, and thank goodness, because it's great for depth of that right defensive end spot, or even if you wanted to put him back behind Demarcus Lawrence at the left DN spot. Alden Smith is somebody who's going to bring a low-risk, high-reward type of scenario with the Dallas Cowboys. If you're expecting him to come in and give you the 47 sacks in 59 games that he had earlier in his season, that's not what you're going to get. You're not going to get an all-pro level, seemingly. Now, you could always see a surprise, and he could uh, come out and be an all-pro. Who knows? But at the moment, a guy who hasn't played football since 2015, there's so much that can happen in that time span. When you look at the Cowboys defense in 2015, there's only three three players on that entire defense that are still on the team, and that's DeMarcus Lawrence, Sean Lee, and Tyrone Crawford. That's it. That's all that was on the team in 2015. And so there's a lot of things that can change, but if he comes in and contributes and plays a considerable amount of snaps at the defensive end spot, I think this is a huge win for the Cowboys. You know, it's going to be very interesting once we are finally able to set our eyes on Alden Smith to see what he actually looks like. Of course, mm -hmm. Jay Glazer and others have pointed out that he's put on good weight up to 290 pounds. That's a different looking Alden Smith than the Alden Smith who was the seventh pick in the draft coming out of Missouri and had so many sacks. In fact, 19 and a half sacks his second year in the league, 33 and a half sacks his first two years in the league. He might be a totally different type player than we saw early on in his career. And I think it will be because whenever you look at NFL players, think about who has taken a considerable amount of time off and who has come back a different player. I mean, you could throw Michael Vick into that category a while back. He took three years off. You have Deion Sanders that took some time off. There are some of those big time players in the past that have taken off a couple years at a time. Five years, though, and then getting back into the swing of things, it's going to look a little bit different. But as long as it's good weight and as long as he's a guy who's going to be in that rotation, I think Smith is somebody that you'll see on Sundays on an active roster and continuing to contribute. Of course, at this point, there's no official depth chart on that defensive line. But let's just take a look at what the Cowboys have at the defensive end position. Kyle, they've got options. Of course, they got the pro bowler, the defensive end on the left side, Demarcus Lawrence. You got Tyrone Crawford coming off double hip surgery on the right side. And then you got a bunch of guys, including Alden Smith, uh, competing for playing time. And that didn't even mention Randy Gregory. And we'll see what his status is going forward. Yeah, Randy Gregory is still a big question mark, but I want to focus on Demarcus Lawrence. One of the things about Lawrence last year was the fact that people thought he had a down year. Uh, he had six sacks, but one of the big reasons why Robert Quinn was so successful last season was because teams loaded up to stop Demarcus Lawrence, and that's why he was held to six sacks, but he was still the 12th highest rated defensive end in all of football last year behind guys that are perennial pro bowlers or all pros at that level so the fact that people are kind of writing Demarcus Lawrence off I think bodes well for his 2020 season the fact that he's kind of under the radar that's scary for offenses he's going to come out and have one of those quote-unquote bounce back years even though I don't think it's much of a bounce back year you know and uh, D-Law has always been the type player he seems to play best when he's got that proverbial chip on his shoulder and coming off a five sack season. He'll probably have that going forward here in 2020. We're just getting started on this edition of the Blitz. When we come back here in a moment, we're going to turn our attention to the Cowboys offense. And there are high hopes for this guy in 2020. It's the Cowboys new starting tight end. That would be one Blake Jarwin. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz is brought to you by AT&T, just okay, is not okay. 
and by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. Throw up to Jarwin. Hurrying down the right side, that 25-15. Blake Jarwin, how about you? That ball is caught by Jarwin. Now pass, Prescott pops and goes in the end zone. Jarwin again. The touchdown machine. Blake Jarwin. Welcome back to the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Lots of things going on with this Cowboys offense. One of those in the offseason, Jason Witten moving on to the Raiders. And now one of the big guys on this offense is going to be the new starting tight end. And Nick Eatman is with him now. Hey, guys. Nick Eatman here, DallasCowboys.com. And we've been uh, fortunate to get a few of these uh, guys coming in for interviews. And Blake Jarwin joins us today. Blake, I really appreciate you. I say stopping by because it sounds right, but uh, logging on maybe is, is, is a better way in this new normal that we're in. Uh, but Blake, I really appreciate you you hopping on with us. How are you going? Yeah, thanks, Nick. Yeah, it's going good. Uh, you know, obviously trying to adjust to all of this uh, stuff going on right now. Um, you know, taking it day by day. That's, that's all, all that we can do. I guess I'll I'll, I'll kind of start there. Day by day, what is uh? What does a day by day look like for for Blake Jarman? I mean, are you waking up the same time? I mean, the, the meetings are you, you know, obviously you guys can uh, you still need to work out and stuff like that. What was it? What's a day kind of look like for you right now? Yeah, uh, you know, Coach McCarthy did a good job of this, just kind of laying out a, a floor plan for us and kind of uh, so we have meetings, you know, midday ten to twelve usually. Uh, we'll meet with our uh, position coaches and things like that, go over the, uh, our film and things. And then, you know, I work out before that. So I'll get up around 7.30 just so I can get out of bed and get moving around before meetings. Uh, but, yeah, it's tough. Uh, luckily, I got a neighbor. He's got some gear I can use. So I go over there and do some stuff and, uh, you know, run when I can. But it's, uh, it's definitely difficult. It's uh, interesting. I think a lot of guys are kind of going through the same scenario. So um, making it work, though. Uh, you know, you got to have a positive outlook and uh, – you know, still got to push yourself. We, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. When I was talking with Darren Woodson yesterday, he was saying that the most disciplined players are the ones that are going to benefit here, the ones that you don't have to be pushed all the time. They don't have to be the strength coaches that have to be always on them. And so you're going to find out in this in these few months here, I guess that's kind of what you're saying. You, you have to, to be dedicated to it. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, we just talked to Coach McCarthy yesterday, actually, and he's like, he still said, hey, I have no idea what's going on, but – we could get two weeks of preparation or we could know in two days where we got to be. So uh, that's kind of my mindset to make sure that I'm ready for anything, uh, you know, for the last second notice. So uh, I think overall, I think as a team, we kind of have that mindset, especially in the tight end room. Let me ask you a little bit about about that, the tight end room. And obviously when you started here, uh, you know, you, you've been there with, with Jason Witten and, and he was here last year as well. And now the tight end room, whatever it's a virtual room or, or whatever it is, uh, you're the guy. You're you're the one that that people, I guess, are, are looking at you. Uh, how how does that feel? Is it is it kind of something yet, or do you, do you even notice it yet because you haven't really been in the room? Uh, yeah, it's it's a little interesting, obviously, since we're not all together. But uh, you know, I'm ready for the challenge. Uh, I learned so much from Wit and uh, you know the other guys that came through before me. Uh, you know, but I, I definitely haven't got content with anything. I definitely understand. I still have a lot to learn, and you know, I got to be better at all parts of the field. So uh, I'm looking for the forward to the challenge. Our new coach, uh, Coach Wells, he's done a good job, kind of leading me along so far. Uh, like I said, obviously it's tough since we're not in the room. Uh, it kind of took a while to adjust to kind of the learning environment, of sitting in my own house and you know, staying focused like that. But he's done a great job of kind of making it easy on us. Uh, we have good conversation. And, you know, he's, uh, I'm excited to get in the room with the guys. So, um, yeah, I guess, sorry, back to your original question. I'm, you know, excited for the task. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be an exciting year. I'll ask you about, uh, you're, the, you're the top tight end, and, and uh, of course, and they paid you very, very uh, handsomely with that. And I, maybe I'll just go there. What, what was What's that like as far as all of a sudden, you know, you, you get, you're not only the number one tight end, but they, they gave you a new deal. And have you got relatives and friends that you didn't even know? Uh, are now calling you and hey remember me Blake? <laughs> yeah there's been a few you know uh, <laughs> jump out like that but no it's it's been it's been good uh to 
to have uh, Jerry come out and, you know, offer me something like that, him and Steven, and, uh, you know, it was, I'm grateful for sure uh, that they believe in me to kind of be the future of the tight end position here. Uh, you know, it's my job to now not ever be content with that. I can't just say I got a good deal, I'm good now, I can coast. Uh, that's definitely not been my approach so far, and it won't be my approach going in the future. Uh, now I got to push myself even harder and prove myself every single day that I deserve what they gave me. And uh, like I said, uh, I'm grateful, but uh, also, you know, excited for the opportunities that beholds with that. I will ask you one, one more question. You're not the only uh, Blake in, in the room anymore. You got the, you got another guy, uh, Blake Bell, who went to that other school in, in Oklahoma. Uh, what, what do you know about him? And, and you know, are we going to see some, some bell dozing uh, packages maybe with him? Uh, yeah, you know, obviously – I've, I haven't had the opportunity to meet him yet, but we've talked in a uh, conversation over WebEx and things like that. And uh, I can already tell by the way he approaches his meetings that, you know, he's got a great work ethic. Uh, like you said, he's from down the street up in Oklahoma for my part. So, uh, you know, we got a little bit of an in-room rivalry, I guess, in that. But that's great. No, I'm excited. He's a great guy. Um, you know, he's going to bring a lot of, of good stuff to our, our tight end room. He's got, you know... He's full of knowledge, and uh, he's definitely helped me out so far, too, kind of bounce off ideas, and he's doing a great job kind of learning this new offense. Uh, as far as the bell, bell dozer package goes, I'm not too sure just yet. Uh, we're still installing the basic stuff, but uh, like I said, I think we got a great group of guys in the tight end room, and I'm excited to see what we do this year. Our thanks to Blake Jarwin, the former Oklahoma State Cowboy, for joining us. And for more of that interview with Nick, you can go to DallasCowboys.com. We go north of the Red River when we come back here on The Blitz. A definite Oklahoma Sooner flavor on the current edition of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. The Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report continues now. Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans, and there are four former Oklahoma Sooners on this current Cowboys roster added this offseason. And Danny Sarek has more on the Sooner connection to the Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys have spent the last few months between free agency and the draft bolstering their roster. Coincidentally, a handful of the newest additions already share a sense of familiarity. The University of Oklahoma. The Cowboys signed defensive tackle Gerald McCoy and tight end Blake Bell in free agency and drafted wide receiver CeeDee Lamb and defensive tackle Nevo Gallimore, all former Sooners. McCoy wore crimson and cream from 2006 to 2009 where he earned a variety of accolades including the Big 12 Defensive Freshman of the Year and Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year his sophomore season. Bell played with the Sooners from 2011 to 2015 where he began his collegiate career as a quarterback before converting to tight end as a senior. These additions bring veteran presence to their respective positions and for McCoy, the opportunity to work with Gallimore in the position room. McCoy was thrilled to say the least after watching the Cowboys draft not one, but two Sooners. Yeah, boy. Oh, we them boys. We got another Sooner in the house, y'all. Yeah, my dreaded brother, my OU brother, and now my cowboy brother. We did it again. So I said, it worked yesterday. Let's see what happens today. So I threw on an OU hoodie. I threw on my OU shorts. And what did we do? We got another Sooner, big dog. Not only do I have a Sooner brother, not only do I have a cowboy brother, I got another D-line brother. <laughs> we them boys. Boomer. Gallimore says he's just as eager for the chance to play with McCoy, someone Gallimore says he looked up to in college. Yeah, when you go to the University of Oklahoma, you want to play the defensive lineman, you know, that's one of the main guys that gets brought up and tells you, you know, how you want to compare yourself to or like a game to match. So again, just studying, you know, being a, being a fan of his game, I... I knew mean, very quickly, you know, if I wanted that opportunity you know, to play at the next level, he was one of the guys that, you know, I'd have to, you know, really just, just look at and see how his approach was and everything. The Cowboys used their first round draft pick on a player they never imagined would fall to them at 17. Receiver C.D. Lamb, a game changer who will round out the trio with Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. Oklahoma head coach Lincoln Riley says in addition to what people see in Lamb's highlight reel on game days, he also stands out on the practice field. 
he's a great practice player, and I think that's why he's continued to improve throughout the years. He, he enjoys football. He enjoys practicing. He's, he's a high-energy guy out there on the practice field, and so he, he's a guy that's going to continue to make himself better and hopefully has that kind of impact on his teammates. These Oklahoma Sooners are only a few hours south of Norman, Oklahoma, as they now make Dallas, Texas their new home. So we've covered Oklahoma State on this show. We've covered University of Oklahoma. Why not head up the Turner Turnpike when we come back? And Kyle Yeomans, the newest edition of the Cowboys from Tulsa University. Like Tulsa's recovered. They he did. got the ball jarred loose at the three. It was Reggie Robinson, and it is intercepted. It's picked off by Robinson. Robinson with the interception at the 40. He juggled it three times and finally corralled it on the pass intended for Wolf. Intercepted by TU. Coming up with a pickoff, and it's Robinson. Robinson near side 40, 30, 25, 20 out of bounds. Welcome back into this edition of The Blitz, and we've talked plenty about those college prospects that played their ball in the Sooner State, but here's another one. Reggie Robinson II might have played his collegiate ball north of the Red River. However, he's a Texas high school football product, and despite growing up about an hour down the road from the Cowboys, didn't have a ton of contact with the team that ended up drafting him. Sanders has the snap and drops back to pass. Looking left. Now throws to the left side, and it is almost intercepted, and it is intercepted. It's picked off by Robinson. We're excited about it, and you're now going to be a Dallas Cowboy. That's I'm excited. When pick number 123 in the fourth round of the 2020 NFL Draft rolled around, it was no surprise that the Dallas Cowboys selected the best player available, Tulsa corner Reggie Robinson II. It was, however, a bit of a shock to Reggie himself. A Cleburne native who, despite growing up about an hour from Arlington, did not have a ton of contact with his hometown club. I've had like minimum, like the Cowboys probably were like the least amount of contact I had like any team. I hear from a lot during this process. One thing that he did hear was rumblings of his fourth round draft stock, a price that soared as a senior for the Golden Hurricane after four interceptions and holding opponents to just a 52 passer rating. I was like, this is honestly exactly where I thought I would like go. I, I heard like fourth round for the most part all through this process. So hearing it in this round was just amazing. His 14 fourth in completions in 2019 were good enough for top 15 in the country. Robinson brings extra length and added depth to the cornerback spot that all of a sudden has a bright future with Trayvon Diggs, Anthony Brown, and Robinson's high upside. At six foot one, he aims to use every part of his game, including his physicality and press trait, to take his game to the next level. Man, I feel like like I incorporate every every strength that I have into my game. So my length, my um, size, my physicality, my speed. I feel like I use all of that when I incorporate my game. I I use everything at my disposal. So I feel like those things I need to work on, and everything else gonna come together. Robinson looks to make an impact in his rookie season at the corner spot and has an opportunity to do so in a spot that definitely needs some of that added depth. When we come back, we'll wrap up this edition of the Blitz as we continue on in this virtual Dallas Cowboys offseason. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz was brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Final minute of the Blitz. Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans on this Memorial Day weekend. And uh, things are getting a little bit back to normal at the Star in Frisco. Take you back to Tuesday. The owner, president, and general manager, Jerry Jones, returned to his office. Had a virtual owners meeting that day. And uh, Kyle's still limited access at the Star, but this is a good sign. Absolutely. It's something that moving forward you can take as a positive sign for the Cowboys in the entire NFL of getting things back to normal. Now, we're still quite a bit of ways before players and coaches are going to be back in these facilities due to some of the uh, other situations around the country. But 
Hey, uh, it's a it's a huge testament to us as a society all over the place. And uh, you talk about the essential workers and all of those out there that do such a great job of keeping all of us safe and hopefully getting us back to football in 2020. And the virtual offseason continues for the Cowboys players on Tuesday. We appreciate you joining us for The Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report.